as we have uh, talked before, uh, that we have started uh, the poetry con contest last year. So this is the second year we are having a, a poetry con contest. This year uh, we had uh, many uh, uh, submissions, and those were uh, blinded review, blind reviewed by the uh, um, judges. We had multiple judges in the panel. Uh, they didn't know, see the names of the poets when they judged the uh, uh, poems, and they ranked it. Is and as you all know, that ranking or like judging poems are so difficult, right? So uh, one person would say, yeah, this is the best, and another person would say, no, 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 this should go into the 10th or somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and moderating the, the judges, uh, like the um, results, and then um, going back and forth, and they are going back and forth with the other judges. It takes time and um, things. So that's why we last year we um, uh, allowed one poet to submit two poems, but this year we said no, one is is maybe um, enough uh, because to uh, reduce the load of the judges. So by um, but um, to to proceed, uh, we are now inviting uh, the ten top uh, poets, the the poets of the ten top poems to read their poems and I would uh, invite uh, Lozan Yamolki uh, to read the first um, first poems. Uh, she is from uh, the Lower Mainland and uh, she has a Kurdish uh, Arabic uh, background and a published poet. So please welcome Lozan Yamolki. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. Can't buy peace. A well-spoken, affluent leader does not employ speechwriters. A leader not muzzled by some who know their damning secrets will not be amusement of the world. A leader that lives an ordinary life among the people not viewing them as inferior to him due to their lack of wealth will lead a nation out of poverty. A leader that possesses an unshakable faith, unashamed to bow in reverence, to meditate and pray, will be beloved and respected by his people. A leader that refused to shake hands of rulers that oppress their people, ethnically cleanse minorities, silence oppositions, and persecute those who speak up, will not cower and do what his predecessor did always in the past. A leader that cares about our planet, stands against polluting corporation and reject private business to destroy our land, our rivers, and our air will give our earth a fighting chance. A leader that would not stand, will not send troops to invade, desecrate, and steal resources of other poor nations in the name of national security will not be a friend of weapon makers. Peace is possible, my friends, because you can't buy peace. All we need is to have a poor leader. Thank you. Thank you, Lozan. Our next poet is Lilia Wallis, and she will be reading her poem, Last Chance Party. Last Chance Party. <laughs> the future is throwing a party and you're invited. Chosen out of missed opportunities to the party of last chance. One more try at the dream that never quite died before it explodes out of time. 
Expect a crowd. Unknown languages. Warning. You won't like everyone. And not all will admire you. The moon has a dark side. Moon has a dark side. Among the honored guests will be ex-convicts. Those who served time in prison for crimes they did not commit. All who were punished for their thoughts, poetry, music, and laughter. Songs of the silenced will be featured. Recognized also will be those who rescue, dress wounds, clean up messes. What would we do without them? Ten gardens to those of us trapped in concrete towers. Numerous unknown cooks will get star status for spreading goodwill and camaraderie. Camaraderie. No social life without them. Mm -hmm. Guests will put food on each other's plates and refill strangers' cups. Music. Music will dissolve the barriers that words create. This dream, the dream has an open heart, not excluding, merely including. One more time, one more time. Yes, you're invited, chosen out of missed opportunities to begin putting back together our broken dream at the party of last chance. One more try. Thank you, Lilia. Wonderful, wonderful poetry and wonderful presentation. And thank you, Enrico Renz, uh, for playing the guitar. Uh, we'll see more of Enrico Renz later on when uh, he will be singing himself. So uh, I invite our next poet now, uh, Dev Mukherjee. And he will be reading the song of the road. Um, just one note that Dev Mukherjee was the winner of the last year's poetry contest. Thank you, Duke. Hello, everyone. Namaste. The Song of the Road. I sing the song of the open road beneath infinite sky, where the rain clouds rumble deep in boundless joy sing I, to the Lord of my heart, Lord of my mind, my soul does pine and cry. So I sing the song of the open road beneath infinite sky. In deserts bleak and forests dark, to glowing valleys green, in cities vast and hamlets quaint, and peaks few men have seen. A minstrel walks with a one-stringed harp, alone and free and spry, 
singing the song of love divine and the Lord I glorify. You ask me which faith I maintain, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh? I am all, yet I am none, for creed I do not seek. Keep your sham religious pride that separates being from being. Every inch of creation bathes in bliss of Lord unseen. This Lord unseen I vow to see with my very eye. So I sing the song of the open road and the Lord I glorify. Lalun, my beloved friend, I follow in your path. My penury is my boundless wealth, my sword, my purest heart. My prayer is my humble song. So till the day I die, I'll sing the song of the Lord of my heart beneath infinite sky. Thank you. Thank you, Dev. Now I invite Sylvia Lee. Uh, I'm not sure whether she is here. Uh, Sylvia Lee. Um, let me let me read the poem on her behalf. Um, the title of the poem is Vini Vidi Amavi uh, by Sylvia Lee. I came and found out sometimes home wasn't four walls but two pretty eyes. I saw and I turned people into homes only to end up homeless. And I loved before they all left me. I've always been alone and scared. I'm sorry that we missed uh, Sylvia Lee here. Um, I would like to invite now Let Leta Lagaunda um, for her poem, Do You Know About the Wind? Uh, she came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. And <laughs> so welcome, Leta Lagaunda. Good evening. Spiritual beings having human experiences, subtle energy flowing through the body, the essence of you. Without revelation, there could be no manifestation. Love, flowing like living water, nourishing everything within its path. An elevated spiritual consciousness, awareness, harmony, oneness, the highest math. Do you know about the wind? God is within. The sound of the Iktara passionately moving through the atmosphere. The air that is the wind of freedom. Her presence is divinely rooted here. Hearts beats, dancing feet. Mother Earth opens up as she smiles, embracing you with each step. She's a reflection of the wisdom, knowledge, and beauty in which you possess. It's love, unattracted, unattached, and unconsumed by the pleasures of life. It's love that unites. For this is the universal language. It speaks without uttering a word. Alive, present, free, healthy is the cage of the bird. Honesty reveals your character. Supreme truth is what you continuously seek. Love for, love for humanity is the core of your being, and Sahana is executed in every song that you sing. Do you know about the wind? My humble reply to the balls. Love is the tie that binds us. Love is the sum of it all. Thank you. Thank you, Leta. Now I welcome Deborah Kelly to, for her poem, Stop It. Thank you so much. It is indeed an honor to be here among such tremendous talent. Um, this is titled, Stop It. Within the lines of the written word, 
a voice enchanting can be heard telling me to write of tribulation, country to country, nation to nation. From person to person, great kingdoms will fall. We're near the end of the play, that's all. What if everyone stood in unity and truth? What if that everyone included me and you too? Stop it. Would we learn from lessons past, always trying to even the score? Or would we put the weapons down, refuse to fight our brother anymore? If all stood at once, turned our back on shadow's bane, refused to be the pawns in their mindless killing games, we can definitely stop fighting endless political wars by simply putting down the guns and vow not to kill anymore. Stop it. We can change the world with heart more passionate, more kind. Stop the evil shadows lurking deep in mortal mind. We can shine a light for freedom, shine it strong and stand in truth. We can leave a kinder legacy, a treasure for our youth. We could lift the world and sing together in love's warm and tender light as our strength sounds out united. We can set everything all right. Start it. Thank you. Wonderful, Deborah. Thank you very much. Uh, our next po poet is Joyce Goodwin, and uh, she couldn't make it uh, today. And who is so, but I am um, inviting Trevor Carolan uh, to read the poem on Joyce's behalf. Thank you very much. This is for Joyce. Uh, uh, I'm familiar with her. We both live on the North Shore, uh, so I'll read it in her absence. She's away. It's called The Last Gardener of Aleppo, and we all know about the agony of Syria. It's for Abu Wad and his son Ibrahim. In his Aleppo garden, Abu Wad grew roses, the guardian of the flowers, this gardener. Flowers help the world. There is nothing more beautiful. These words he spoke as he nourished hope, planting flowers on city roundabouts and public streets. He kept planting between each blitz of barrel bombs, cluster bombs, precision missiles dropped from the militarized sky onto cratered ground below. The world belongs to ordinary people who rebuild what has been destroyed, he said. When citizens came to buy his flowers, it was an act of faith, a belief that life and beauty would return to their once beautiful, beloved city. Abu Wad said he heard the violent crescendo as a Beethoven symphony. One day, a barrel bomb exploded near his garden, and he died during that grand finale of death. Bloodied roses crushed by steel, shriveled into ground, velvet petals seeped outrage as word of the death of Abu Wad gave voice to universal grief for the last gardener of Aleppo. Thank you, Trevor. Now, Mystic, mystic Musing Musings by Kosturi Ghosh. Please um, welcome Kosturi Ghosh. Hi. 
Hi, everybody. I'm vertically challenged, so I need to make sure this reaches you. Hope you can hear me. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to be called upon to read two years in a row, and I have seldom uh, enjoyed an evening as much as I did last year. So it's very keen to be part of this, and I'm really happy that I could make it on a working day. So uh, my uh, poem is called Mystic Musings. I was, uh, it was very interesting to get the uh, topic of bowel philosophy because a person like me has had very little if nil exposure to uh, this particular um, philosophy or thought. And in the, um, in the writing of this poem, the little research that I could do was very interesting and it, it was really enlightening. So here goes, Mystic Musings. We are of your world, yet you see us not. Our nomadic hearts have only meaning sought. That which is incomprehensible, unfathomable, and intangible has engulfed our beings across years. As sighs, Sufis, and bowels, we moved amongst you, feeding off love and drinking ecstatic tears. When the sun sets and the earth is bathed in an orange glow, our music flows through villages like evening breeze. Children, mothers, and the tired farmer alike Listen with a smile, and time seems to freeze. Where's our God, you ask? To who do we pray? Which deity consumes our thoughts night and day? Our hearts are untethered, our spirits free to soar. We look for no deity at your temple door. Into our own souls we look, into your heart, to find the whole of which we are but a part. Bound to all humanity by one common thread, we seek but the fabric that weaves us all in its stead. Monir Manush, our spiritual image we seek amongst souls in joyous days and nights dark and bleak. Through our melodiously soulful and heart-rendering songs, we reach to that esoteric and mammoth beyond. Come sing with us, join in our song. Thank you. Thank you, Kasturi. Our next poet is Angelina Gao. And I don't know whether she is here. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll try to read the book, uh, read the uh, poem. So, uh, Your World, Angelina Gao. When I first met you, you smiled at me, a grinning smile that showed teeth that left your eyes distant. I smiled back and tried my best to fit into your world. A mistake, a mistake. Time passed, we drifted apart. I was left with a more guarded heart against the treachery that you brought into my life. What you call the real world, that what you did to gain was justified if you got it in the end, because the world didn't care one way or the other. I left you behind, yet I see you every day, reflected in glass windows of shops, faces of people waiting at the bus station. It was you again that cheated and stole what was meant to be mine, but in the end, you were right. The world doesn't care one way or the other. I think we have come to the last poet, last but not the least for sure. And um, last year I, I called up the uh, poets out to the podium in alphabetical order and this year I realized that's not fair. So what I did that I actually calling people reverse al alphabetically this time. Yeah. That's why B is the last and Y was the first today. So Tapus Bishash, our last poet, and he will be reading his poem Nude.
Good evening, everyone. I'm going to read my favorite poem to you, and uh, it is about nudity. Close your eyes. Let not see anything. Let not say anything either. Stop all your senses just for now and be at peace. Please don't feel anything. Just breathe. Let me undress you one after another. Slowly, slowly, very slowly. Let me see your fine carbs. Let the beauty come out exactly the way you are the gorgeous craft of nature. Let me explore all the valleys, all the hidden corners. Nope, you are not naked yet. This is just the beginning. Now let go the shyness of nudeness and become the shameless you. Let go the fear, the judgment, the prejudice, one after another. Harness the hidden emotions from every corner of your heart. Look out for the roots of all social norms, lying every neuron of your brain. Let go desire, let go pleasure, let go hunger and chase. Let you become only your own pace. Empty the body, empty the brain. Give up everything from every cell of you. Sever the pain of giving up. Nothing left to show off. Tear drops and you. Now you are nude. Congratulations. I have been waiting for you, I don't know since when. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tapush. So now we have uh, heard the 10 poems, and now is the moment of truth, um, the moment we are all waiting for, uh, announcement of the first three uh, winners of this contest. And I would uh, invite our Vice President, uh, Bernice Lever, uh, on stage uh, to give out the, uh, the certificates. So our, we start with the third, third wi uh, prize winner. Our third prize winner in this year's Vancouver Tagore Society Poetry Contest is the poem, Can't Buy Peace, by Lozan Yamolki. Congratulations. Okay, so on to the second prize winner. And the name of the poem is, Do You Know About the Wind? Leta Lagaunda. the last one, the most important one maybe, uh, what's the name of the poem is, okay, uh, Last Chance Party. <laughs> Lilia Wallace. like to invite the seven other uh, poets to, to have their certificates, and I'll be reading out the names. Uh, Angelina Gao is not here. Uh, Tapos Bishash. And 
the all the other uh, like the top 10 uh, poets uh, they get the honorable mention uh, certificate kosturi ghosh dev mukherjee Sylvia Lee is not here. Okay. Deborah Kelly. Um, so, may I uh, invite uh, Trevor to get the certificate for Joyce? Yeah. With that, uh, we are going to uh, break, have a very sh brief break, um, and we'll come back at seven ten. We'll, uh, it's, uh, like we are uh, running a little bit uh, uh, late, so we'll come back at 7.10 after the intermission and we'll have some uh, very light refreshment out on the lobby. So after that we'll come back for the second part and we'll start with the music by uh, Enrico Renz, then we'll have the reading by five invited poets and we'll, and we'll, uh, have, we'll end with uh, Lecture presentation by Shantanu Mitro on Bengal, uh, Bowls of Bengal and Rabindranath Tagore. There are some books on the on the table outside uh, for you to look uh, by the poets who have read here, and by wall poetry also. So, yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you again in 15 minutes.